Hi, welcome to a new video, and uh, I've bought another job lot. Uh, this one is just general assorted cameras and photographic equipment. Um, now, I do know a few other things in there, but not everything that's in there. And I thought it'd be interesting this time around to unbox it on the actual video. Now, one thing I will say is I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so if I do sound a bit funny, my apologies for that. And if there are any cuts in the video, it's probably because I've had a coughing fit while recording this. But with no further ado, let's open it up. So it actually arrived this morning and uh, I've been itching to open it all day and haven't had a chance to get to it. So this is going to be you finding out and seeing my reaction at the same time. So I've got no idea what packing material has been used in here. So I am having to be a bit careful with the knife as I go into it. But it's a hefty package. The courier this morning was definitely complaining a bit at the weight of it. Random pieces of paper. Right, hopefully I won't need the knife anymore. Okay. Random polystyrene and uh, <coughs> other bits. In here, sorry, just wanted to check I hadn't dropped anything. Okay, so let's kick off with, well, this is remarkably boring, but there we go, a random selection of lens hoods and eye cup, and what appears to be a screw fit body cap, so that's not particularly interesting. Let's pop that behind me. Um, so 52mm skylight filter there on a lens hood that doesn't look like it wants to come off easily, so oh god that's filthy. I might have to try and get that off later. Another random lens hood. Ah, looks like my collection of random lens hoods is increasing. Uh, Astron filter, double threaded. Skylight, 46mm. Price. Nine pounds and ten pence. And there's nothing in there. Well, that, that's great, isn't it? I'm hoping. <laughs> Actually, I don't really care that much. It might be somewhere in here, but I don't know. That's... What do we have here? It's a absolutely... That's tiny filter there and I really don't know what that's for. I will have to have a look but if anybody does know it's a haze filter. It might be for one of the cameras that's in here. Doesn't even say a thread size on it but that's that is absolutely tiny. Right. Another lens hood this time in a leather case. A Prinz 880C flash gun with PC cable. No batteries and a little bit of corrosion on the battery terminals in there. So that could well turn out to be completely useless. Um, a PC cable extension lead. An empty photographic filter haze, 22 millimeters. Well, that's empty again, but we do have a 49 mil 80B color correction Hoya filter in there. We've got a feeling that most of the crap is on the surface here. Another empty filter case. In fact, we've got a lot of these. Oh. This is a weird one. 
it, it's a plastic pouch for a filter but there's a spring clip in the back and a lens just loose in the front so I've got a feeling that that's at some point fallen apart and just been lobbed back in there so yes it definitely looks like all of the rubbish is out the front oh we've got some more these are Kodak tiny filters in here so that looks like it's a push on doesn't say what it is not that I can read in this light anyway and no, nothing to identify this one but again a tiny little filter so delving into these will be quite interesting later on yes I am sad enough to think that that's interesting it's a Miranda Japan flash bracket so it goes onto your tripod bush at the bottom and allows you to mount a cold shoe item on top of there um, random Canon lens hood not lens hood, lens cap, sorry a Practica camera strap that's never going to be used More random lens hoods, a Sigma one, um, a no brand push on one, an Olympus rear cap, that's Olympus OM fit, a no brand collapsible lens hood, yes all of the crap has definitely been put on the top, I'm hoping that that then protects the stuff underneath. That, if you don't know, is a Super 8 film canister. I didn't notice any Super 8 cameras in the pictures when I saw this. Oh, I thought this would be lens hoods, and it kind of. Oh, God, this is a. Alright, there's a lens hood in two parts that's, I assume, falling apart there and a yellow filter in a case. They were both rammed in there. It's a 52mm mount of some sort. A Jessup's Supreme multi-coated filter, 49mm 1B, which would make it a skylight. Any guesses as to whether it's in there? Ooh, it actually is. We actually do have the filter in there. So, so far I've got lots of lens hoods, lots of filters, and a dodgy flash. Aha! <laughs> right, this is one of the things I did know was in there. This, it's a little loose, but it just needs tightening up, is a little collapsible table type tripod um, manufactured by Cobra. I used to sell these years ago, um, and they're actually quite handy because they've got a little locking plate there, and it's got quite a bit of adjustment on it. You can then fold it right the way down, and it folds flat to go in your bag. So, as I say, it's a bit loose, but hopefully... I'll just tighten up and be a vaguely handy thing to have. 52mm Jessup's filter hood again. Um, a Hoya filter. 49mm 181B, so colour correction again there. Okay, we're starting to get to the bottom of these and hopefully start getting into um, some of the cameras and other bits in there. Uh, Hoya 49mm Skylight. At least I'm topping up on filters here. Ooh, this is 32mm filter holder. So a lot of this stuff I know was older. And yep, we've got some 32mm push-on. Oh look, they are screw thread. They just allow others to be pushed on there. Colour correction filters. 
no idea if they will fit anything in here or any of my existing cameras but again little filters like this when you mess around with older cameras as I like to can be quite useful black cross combined filter mount and lens hood fits 38 millimeter lens barrel there we go so, I mean, a lot of people will find stuff like this insanely boring, but I, I find it quite interesting, particularly when it's got the original packaging on it like that. You know, I, I, I don't know why, I just quite like the historical significance of some of this older stuff, and to a degree it's why I ordered it. Ah, right. This, if it's what I hope it is in there, is one of the items I saw on here and piqued my interest. And it does appear to be... And this is a Practica PB to M42 adapter. So these are um, for the Practica bayonet cameras, such as my BX20, which uh, I've done a review video of, and you can watch that up here. But this allows you to mount M42 lenses on there, which I've got a number of, and these normally fetch quite a whack in their own right. Um, so that it had one of these in there, I was actually quite pleased, and the box is very tatty, but technically it's a boxed one. Right, getting further into this, um, ooh, some Kodak gelatine filters. So, don't actually know if they're in there. I will take them out and have a look at them more carefully. Right, it's a box. I don't know what's in the box. Let's have a look. Ooh, the box doesn't want to open very nicely, but. We have a light meter. So I did know there are a number of light meters in there. I've got no idea as to how functional or accurate any of these light meters are, but having some handheld light meters can be a useful thing. So as I say, I did know that there was a number of these in here, as well as another box and I suspect I know what's in here yep and there we go so that is a cold shoe mounted rangefinder for viewfinder type cameras um, that don't have an inbuilt rangefinder so you can use this to actually work out your range it says it's go oh, it says it's a combi meter and it's got DIN ratings on the top so I'm not quite sure I'm gonna to have to do a bit more digging hopefully you can see that I'm not quite sure what that means does that mean it's got some kind of selenium cell light meter built into it if it does that will be absolutely fantastic little piece of kit to find I shall definitely have to have a play around with this one and report back oh it's even got the original instructions in there. First glance, they will appear to be French, but what else have we got in here? A couple more bits of paper in here. So, well, that's just a guarantee certificate. But what's this one here? Uh, because it's in meters, somebody has written their own conversion table, meters to feet, and included it in the box for themselves. I'm guessing they weren't the metric sort in that case. But that, if it does both distance and light, that's an intriguing little find, and I'm, I'm quite pleased about that. That's not something, I must confess, I was expecting. Um, right, we have... Well, that shouldn't have been posted. Some film cement. I'm probably going to suspect that this, it, my God, it's not dried up. That's actually some film cement for splicing um, cine film together. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> it's Agfa Cine Cinecol. I've got no idea how old that is 
Right, I'm going to put this to one side because that's quite flammable. <laughs> okay, um, and a Prince Vex lens cap alongside that. Um, oh, Ilford Durafit lens hood. Now, I've got a feeling that there is an Ilford camera in here, so that may fit that. And again, boxed. And it may just be me. But that was one of the reasons this job lot in part appealed to me, because a lot of the stuff appeared to be boxed. OK, we've got a fairly beaten up and tatty um, Hanamex uh, Sakonic light meter there. Again, we'll have to check that for functionality, but handy things to have. Right. Um, a 37 mil. Photax boxed lens hood. Two boxes of self-sealing aluminium finish jiffy mounts. All films. Oh, and they appear to still be in their original waxed paper. Look at that. But they're for a t tiny 35mm transparencies, but they don't look like they're big enough for 35mm transparencies. If I pop one out, they look far too small for that. So, a bit more investigation will have to be done on those. They're not really going to be of a great deal of use anyway, but. They're quite, quite nice. Right, we have a lens. What do we have here? Um, a Pentacon three, F3.5 30 mil bayonet metal lens. But that, that is not Practica B, and the lens is far too old for that, so I'm not sure, I've got to be honest, what this is meant to fit. And I don't know about you, hopefully you can see that. It looks as though somebody may have been playing around with that. So I'm not even sure that that's the original mount on that lens. That's that's quite interesting. But as you can see, it's a Pentagon 30mm f3.5. Well, you probably can't see that. Let me just bring the light source over there. Now you should be able to see that and everything's gone weird. Right, let's keep digging. Another little leather case. And what appears to be a light meter in there with a little, it's very hard to see because it's black on black, but a metal calculator on top of it. So, yet another light meter. Oh. A Prince Jupiter. 277C, I did read that right, the night, a 277C flash gun. My god, it's got batteries in it. I think we'll take them out and get rid of those. Amazingly, no leakage from said rubbish batteries. Uh, the chances of me using this are virtually nil, and it has a very worrying rattle coming from it. Anything that rattles that much and has a capacitor in it, I don't really want to play around with. Ah, and here's something else I knew, which can go, I hope, on my BX20. A Practica B Winder. One of the Practica winders, and takes four double A's. Contacts all look clean on it. So that, I can mount on my Practica BX20 and see how that works. Yay! Yes, I am easily excited by TAT. Um, oh, there's the manual for it, and the manual for the um, 880C flash gun. This is a really quite tatty case, which I'm seeing it for the first time as you 
has an AVO exposure meter in there. Hold it up to the light, doesn't appear to be doing anything. I've got a feeling this may not be working particularly well anymore. This thing weighs an absolute ton. That's really quite industrial. Ooh, the bottom comes off of it. Maybe I can... No, that doesn't want to come apart, so... That's going to need a little bit more TLC to tender that apart. And ah, this is going to be a camera. But what camera is it? It is a Brownie 620 Model C made in England by the Kodak company. So it's a little Kodak box Brownie camera and I do know that, take that out Gideon, I do know that there are a few box brownies in this job lot. Um, I'm hoping not all of them are 620s and some of them are other formats, but that's actually quite tidy. If I remember correctly, these were made in the 40s, maybe 50s, round about that, but that one's quite tidy. Even the case doesn't smell disgusting. Word of warning with job lots, most camera cases, when you get them that are this old, smell quite horrible. Right. Uh, oh, used to sell these bad boys as well. GP slide mounts, shed load of them in here, all unused, all completely empty by the looks of it. So, didn't find any interesting Re already made up ones with pictures on there, but there we go, completely useless those again as well. Um, I'm probably not going to have much use for them. Okay, so another fairly messy camera bag here, and inside this we have, oh it really doesn't want to come apart, a Kodak Brownie 127. This is, I've never come across one of these before. This is interesting. Where on earth is the shutter release on it? Let me just show you this. I, I genuinely, let me open this up. I genuinely can't see a shutter release on this. Okay, so yeah, it drops out there. That doesn't depress. the big white button on the front there. Now this is um, 127 film this takes. Now you can still buy 127 film but what I've bought from eBay recently, let me just pop that back in its bag while I get it for you and show you where did I put them, just here, is some tiny little adapters that allow me to run 35mm film in 127 cameras. So that one and its weirdness will get an outing at some point, assuming the shutter and everything's working okay in it. Right, we have another brownie. Now, this one is almost certainly going to be older. This is a number two brownie for 120 film. Excellent. It's a bit... It's a, not in as good condition as the other one. This is going to be a lot older. It's going to need a little bit of TLC to get it back up and running. But this is potentially usable. Yep. The shutter, after a fashion, fires. So, as much earlier, I think these ones were probably around about the 30s to the 40s. But again, it's, it's got its little case in there for it. Ooh, we have a lens in a case that's held together by a lot of tape. Um, Sun lenses. It's actually a Soligo. Ooh, that's sticky. 
That's very sticky. It is. Well, that's an unusual focal length for it. It's a, it's a zoom. Oh wow, this is actually quite interesting. It's a 45 mil, let me get that light source on here. It's a, sorry, 45 mil to 150. Hopefully you can see that. But it's a constant f3.5. So that's actually fairly fast and it really, really does feel it. That That's a hefty beast. And I think, yep, M42. So, usable not just on my Practica MTB3, once I've cleaned up that stickiness, um, but also now with the adapter, usable on my BX20. So that's interesting because 3.5, that's fast for a zoom lens, even one of an unusual range like that. That is pretty fast. I'm quite impressed with that one. All right. Ooh, this is a tiny. Right, it's another 127 camera, but this time it's a um, Kodak box brownie one again. Yeah, it is. It's a number zero brownie, 127, and this is a Canadian. Hopefully you can see that. This is a Canadian box brownie. So... Again, not in the tidiest of conditions, but that really doesn't want to come out of there. That's quite tight, but inside it actually doesn't look too bad. Interestingly, no rollers on it. It's got foam instead, but I don't think the 35mm film canister is going to go in there to allow me to use the adapter with that one. So I think the only way this one will ever start working again would be with some actual 127 film in there. Which, given the absurdly cute nature of this, is if it's all working okay and reasonably light tight, I might actually do, purely because I love the idea of cracking this out on the street and going, you know, oh my God, that viewfinder's horrendous. It really is. But I love the idea of shooting this on the street and seeing what people make of it. I like that. That's, that's properly cute. Right. Flash lead, no idea what from. Um, weird random piece of strappy thread, got there's some rubbish in here. Um, Kodak, this is, okay, this is a um, Instamatic, but, come on, I need you to come out of the case for reasons. I don't know how, oh, there we go, I've got it out of the case. It's an Instamatic, 137, so it takes 126 film, but, it's got a film in it. I mean, it's 100 ASA, so... There we go, I've just taken the picture. It will probably not expose very well. Um, and I've got no idea where I can get, as you might know from previous um, unboxings where I've had Instamatics, I've got no idea where I could get it developed or how much it would cost me or whether it's just ridiculously cost prohibitive. And we have another one. We have another Instamatic. Uh, this is the 177 Instamatic. And wow, again, we've got a film in there and this film looks barely used. So the 177s, I think these were ran from the mid 70s to the mid 80s, if my memory serves me. I don't profess to be an expert on Kodak Instamatics. These two Instamatics are actually in really tidy condition. I really do wish somebody would bring back 126 film. Um, you know, uh, Lomography, you've brought back 110. Bring back 126. It's a much bigger negative. It's a much nicer format. So please, please do. Um, on an unrelated note, we have another brownie. So another box brownie, I'm not sure what this one is or where it was. Ah, right, let's have a look. 
This is another Canadian one, so it says so on the back, and this is a number two brownie that takes 120. <sighs> I had a moment of excitement there, and the battery bloody died. This is 120, and it's got film in it. I should have checked before I opened the back but it has definitely got film in it. I'm going to put this to one side um, and I'm going to wind the film on, see what exposure number we're on. Um, if there's still a few shots on there, I'm hoping, because they'll still be wound on the roll, that it might not have completely ruined it and I might send it off for developing anyway. Because why the hell not? And I might shoot the rest of them. Right. Check the back first, Gideon. Check the back first. I'm an idiot. <sighs> we have a Practica BX case. Doesn't have a camera in it. I mean, I've got a Practica BX. I don't know if it'll fit in here. But with the winder on it, definitely won't. So that's basically tat and rubbish. Uh, oh, a three-way cement splicer. So these, uh, if again you're not familiar with them, these are what they used and possibly still do use in some cases in larger format for splicing cine film. I don't shoot cine film, nor do I have any intention of, but it's an interesting little curio nonetheless. Right, keep going. There's a lot in here. Okay, a Vivitar 2800 flash gun. Boxed. There's an old manual flash gun, so I vaguely remember these being on the market. And I dropped the battery door in the box just to seeing if, yeah, the contacts are clean on there. I mean, I don't have a great deal of use for batteries, uh, sorry, for these flash guns, but that one's actually fully boxed, full instructions, clean condition. Oh no, I definitely sold these. Definitely, definitely sold these back in the day. A Cobra Auto 250. Uh, da, 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 da. Instructions, my goodness me. Now, these, one thing at a time, Gideon. So these are the flash gun. This is the flash gun itself. Okay, and again, no batteries, but the contacts are clean. But when you bought these, you could, you got with them a set of coloured filters and a wide angle adapter. So that's what's in this box here. And normally these go missing and all of them are in here. That's that's actually quite surprising, particularly given these things would have been on sale late 80s through to the 90s. Certainly, I was selling them in photographic retail back in the early 90s. Wow. Right. What have we got here? Um, oh. Beretti. Beretti camera case. Let's open this up. It is a Beretti VSN. I'm just trying to get it out of its case so I can show you properly. There we go. A Beretti VSN. Let's just check. No, it doesn't appear to be any film in it, so we're good in regard to that. This thing is very plastic. And I've got to be honest with you, the shutter is jammed right open. So I strongly suspect that this is completely US. So yeah, it just winds on and winds on and winds on. So plastic, quite horrible and doesn't appear functional in any way whatsoever. So that's now a shelf queen with its horrible strap and case. We are getting to the end of this. I, oh, he says that, and then he uncovers more stuff. A Decora. Right, we have a Decora Super Diginet. Now, these were also sold as the Ilford Sportsman. 
um, so Ilford rebadged them. This one doesn't appear to have any film in it. Shutter appears to fire. The finder is fairly clean. Oh, it's got a meter in it. Meter doesn't appear to be doing anything, but that might just might need a bit of a tidy up. But yeah, that's quite quite pretty. Looks reasonably clean in there. How does it open? I'll have to have a bit more of a dig on this one because it's not a model, ah, there we go, that I am intimately familiar with. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, but yeah, there we go. First glance, that appears functional. Uh, right. Ooh, an Agfa Stiletti box. With instructions and an Agfa Stiletti inside it. Doesn't appear to have any film in it. Let's see if we can work out how we get that open. So what lens have we got on this? Uh, 45mm f3.5 unusual little oh that's your shutter count is on a little wheel down the bottom there and it's hinged from this side ah there we go little hidden lever hinged down the bottom there it's hinged the wrong way round you'll notice so to a lot of cameras of its age but that's quite nice quite interesting particularly as it's boxed looks like it could well be working. Plastic box. What's it got in it? Let's see if I can get it open. And it's just a load of unused slide mounts in a plastic slide box. Pentax ball and socket head, this is labelled up as. Is indeed a ball and socket head. Um, I mean, it doesn't look to me like it's a specifically Pentax one. It's got a really, really unusual mount on the top of there. I mean, uh, We'll have to look at into it, but I've got no idea how the hell you would mount that on a camera. If I can't figure it out and you can work it out, please do drop a note in the comments down below because that quite unusual. But there we go. It says Pentax in here. I've not, as I say, seen any Pentax cameras in here. And no, I don't know what it fits. Right. Another case. And yeah, it's an Ilford Sportsman. So the camera we were talking about a moment ago, this is effectively its sibling. So where did I put that? No, not that one. There we go. Right, the Decora Diginet and the Ilford, if I put them up side by side, you will notice quite a few similarities between them. These are different models, but they are effectively of the same family. So Decora made them and they were branded as Ilford Sportsman. I believe that's the way round. And this one has a 45mm f2.8, 45mm f2.8 probably the same lens or as near as damn it so that's a interesting little one right do we have anything left well we've got a quite weird now uh, this is a screw over collar which some cameras needed um, cable release that well, doesn't work particularly well but 
There we go. I don't think I'd want to put that on a camera myself. Okay. Aha! It's a good job I checked. You should always check job lots, particularly if they're packaged like this. Always check them. Because I've just found this. Let's have a look what it is. And it's another cold shoe mounted range finder. But this one's purely range finder. Um, Praziza? Not a brand I'm familiar with. But yeah, a little top mounted range finder on there. So. Yeah, appears to work. Uh, I would imagine. Oh no, this one's measuring in feet. I wonder if the original owner bought this one because they couldn't get on with the other one in meters. Who knows? About three and a half feet for that. Yeah, that's, that's a rough, rough eyeball guide there. That's about right. But yeah, another little rangefinder in a little leather case. So I think that is it. I will report back if I find anything else, but it was an unusual um, rifle through a job lot this time. Uh, as I say, I wasn't looking for anything specifically. I saw a few things that interested me in there, and I felt like it would be an interesting video to go through and look at everything that was contained within this particular set. So I'm not overly concerned with the value. I think I paid around about £40 for this entire lot. Um, given the range of interesting cameras and accessories I've got out of it, and a lot of weird rubbish I've got out of it as well, I actually think it was 40 quid reasonably well spent many people will disagree but if you've enjoyed this please do hit the like button and if you want to see more content like this uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos get uploaded thanks very much for watching take care